hello good day and welcome back so this is going to be a wrap-up section for our chapter 7 on channels it doesn't mean that we've learned everything about channels but it meant that what it means is that we've learned enough to allow us to move on remember we're not trying to do everything in depth one um, to in depth because this is you know go learning and no first course on go is going to teach you everything second thing is I do not know everything um, and so there's some parts of the language I know fairly well and other parts I'm still learning. But even the parts that I know really well, I still wouldn't try to teach you at that depth because um, that would defeat the purpose of keeping you excited. And this is your first introduction to go uh, without turning you away. OK, so with all that said, I think the bottom line, the, th the takeaway is that you've learned enough about channels for us to move on. And so in this section on reviewing channels, we kind of go back and make sure we just touch on some of the important parts. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how you deal with closed channels and you can test them. And then we'll look at using default in the select case, uh, with the select statement. Um, don't worry, um, I'll cover it all with examples, so you'll see what I mean. So let's just save this, minimize it for now. And so as usual, we're going to start off by copying uh, you know, our previous section code and starting with that chapter 07, section 08, let's see into 08 and start up my code editor. Okay, and so that's nice and big and this is where we left off. Now, like I said, I wanted to start a, to review where um, this chapter on channels, so let's just do just that. So chapter seven on channels, and this is our review okay all right and so let's get rid of everything for now and basically let's start off like we did at the beginning and we said so we can create a channel and channel have type and so for example if i create a channel of boolean and then i also do fmt print len uh, print f for example and i do channel c for example percent v backslash and and then I do this, I should expect a nil channel, just like I, if I created a variable for a map or a slice, and I didn't uh, you know, allocate an underlying array for that slice or allocate a map, it would be a nil map. But still, because Go is too funky, um, <laughs> we can do something, the length, we can still get the length of our channel, right? And so, percent V, tap, tap, and then length of C. And this does not fail even though it's nil, and so we should expect this to have is nil and then, um, you know, zero. So I say go run main. And that's exactly what we see here. Nil channel, but it's still zero. And of course, we know that if you try to put a value on this nil channel, um, it's going to fail. Um, let me bring this down here. Um, if you try to put a value on this nil channel, it's going to fail. And that is because we tried to write a nil channel. And um, really, if you actually try to read from a nil ch channel, it blocks indefinitely. And so here we would um, find, we'll see that our goal lang is going to tell us that our, all our um, go routines are deadlocked. That's because you only have this one go routine here and we're trying to write to a nil channel, okay? Now, if we wanted to, we can make our channel not nil by saying make a channel of boolean and this is an unbuffer channel meaning that though there's no space no buffer in this channel for you to be able to say queue up some values okay and so we can be redundant here with our type because we are already making a channel of type bool so save us some typing and we could take that off type there and so now here we're still gonna um, have a panic because we don't have anyone waiting on the other side to read. We don't have more than one Go routine. There's just the one that's running our main program. And so the same exact thing is going to happen. Now we don't have a nil channel, still zero here, but then all Go routine at deadlock or asleep. All right. So if we want this to actually succeed, we're going to create at least a buffer to be able to store our one value that we want to put there. And now we can see that we're able to send that value and on that channel is buffered there and then of course our program um, proceeds now um, the other thing that we know is that we can create a channel with a number of um, with let's say 
in channel for example well let's stick with this and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say well I'm gonna get rid of this okay and I'm going to say that um, instead I put a value on there and I'm gonna say read a value off of this channel and we know that that's going to be C and then say FMT at print len and I'm going to say V okay and of course let's use my code and if I try to read another value from this channel we're going to expect it's going to read this one value true it's going to try and read another value and of course we can expect this to block because there's no other value there on the channel so again I should have a deadlock now when we close the channel so I'm gonna close this channel so I wrote one value to it on the channel and I'm gonna close it and you can see that now my program is not gonna deadlock because when it gets here and go to read from that closed channel it's gonna be like mm, I know this channel is closed so I don't really expect anyone to be sending anything on it anymore so I'm not gonna block because it's not open it's closed but what is the value gonna be here V since it's not gonna block because it it's explicit, it's, it's now closed, so I shouldn't expect anyone to be able to send any value. But we only put one value on that channel, right? So we're gonna see that we're not gonna panic, but look at this. We're gonna get a value of false for V. Now we only push true on there, so we get it false. Well, that's because this channel is closed, and even though we don't expect anyone else to send a value, we're gonna read the default value for this type, which is Boolean. And if we were to change this to an int, and say, I say I'm gonna push two on there, we'll see that oh, when I read, I'm gonna get zero because that's the default value um, for the type int. All right, so, but there's something else going on. If you remember that we can put a value on a channel, so we could say C gets, you know, five, C gets, you know, seven, for example, we can close it. And then we were able to do a four v colon equals to range c and then we were able to loop over and print out that value and then because our channel is closed um we know that our come on um what am i messing up uh colon equals to v colon equals what am I, range over c what am i missing all go routines are asleep what is this talking about? Close C. Oh, yep. That's because I tried to push more than one value on there. So it's going to be blocked here. So let's make this like 10. All right. Run that again. And so this loops over and finish. Well, fine, right? Again, because range is going to see it out. The channel closed so it can stop reading. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to wait, right? So we don't have any panic about deadlock. Now, of course, if I don't close it, we'll have a deadlock when we keep trying to read from it. But there's something else that's happening, and that is what I want to show you. When you go to read from a channel, like when I had um, this case just now, when I had only two values here, and I was trying to read as I was before, V colon equals read from C, there and then I said to FMT that print len v and I'm just gonna duplicate this but of course there's no new value so there and we saw that though this is gonna give me um, two come on so read from C da 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 v equals what it says no declaration statement outside of function body what is this talking about oh I don't need this. <laughs> All right, so come on. Oh man, change directory accidentally. Um, so I want to go back to eight. Okay, so go main. All right, there we go. Ah, wow. All right, so um, so I get back and now I can run and get um, back to my zero value. What I want to do is this. Okay comma okay and I want to print out these value now okay and okay 
And so watch what's happening here now. Notice when I was able to read the values on there, I have true. And when I go to read a value that's not on there, I get false. That's telling me at all. This represents that I'm trading from a closed channel. So this is a nice way for you to be able to say, hey, is the volume reading is because this channel is closed or is it the default value? Now you might not think that this kind of makes sense, but it does because it, if, you, if you're going to read from a closed channel, it's always going to be successful. No matter if you keep looping on a closed channel, you're going to always get a value. You want to be able to know when you're reading from that um, channel or not. So here's an example. Um, I'm going to put a few values on this channel. Well, I'm going to leave it just like it is actually. And I'm going to say for i equals to 0, i less than 10, or even 13, i plus plus. And I am going to put this in here. And I'm going to actually, um, <laughs> yeah, let's just um, put this up here too. And as you'll see, that if I loop around and print, you're going to see the first time is true and all the other time is false. So I can read for infinity from this closed channel, and I'm just going to get the default value. So it's good that you can ask, is this channel closed or not? And if you think we can pair this with looping from this, um, in this statement, this for loop over here, by putting this up here, here like this and say that's our initialized simple statement and then say if it's okay then I want to do whatever the, the for, for loop body is and then after that I still want to read again right I want to read again so remember this statement is get executed one time at the beginning of the loop then if it's okay I go do this and then after this I execute the second the start statement and then test the value again so what that means is the, I'm going to keep the first time I, if I read, I'm going to get two and true. That's okay. True is uh, okay. is true. So I'm going to come in here, print that out. The second time I go wrong, I'm going to try and read a value V and check and see if the channel is closed. I'm going to get zero and false. And since this is false, it's not going to go in there. So I'm going to only print out that value one time. So it's going to be as if I was looping over with range. Okay, come on. Um, so, da, 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 da. What is, oh, I need an equal. All right, there we go. So, I loop over there, and there you see, I got true, and it didn't go in again. So, you can imagine that this is exactly equivalent to what the range <laughs> C is doing for us, right? So I can remove this and literally just put that is equals to range over C. And I get the same behavior because the range is testing that OK value for me to make sure it's all, um, I don't go in and do it again. So I don't, I don't think that you can get the second value though. That, that is not allowed. Um, this range when used on a channel does not give you the second value, okay? The range is taking care of it for you and just returning the value from the channel and it's going to stop when the channel is closed or um you know because again it would block otherwise on an open channel but it would stop when it's closed so it doesn't make sense for it to give you that okay value and if you put this here it's going to tell you too many variables in range okay so that's what i want to cover about a closed channel and how you can test a closed channel so it's the first bullet point there um, the other thing I want to talk about now is select. And so if you rem remember that we had, let's say we had odd, um, and let's call this even, even. And then now I'm going to put some value on odd. I'm going to send a value one. Da -da 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 -da. I'm going to send three, five, seven, nine, and 11. And then for odd, for even, um, let's do this. Let's do this, that, that, that. I'm gonna do even. And then I'm gonna do two, four, six, eight, 10 
and 12. Okay? And we know that if we do select and we do case for reading some value t or value v equals the reading from odd and then we fmt that print len and we print v and of course if we do this again and this time we do even and of course we should say what we're doing here so we should say something like um, odd and even right so uh, this is even there we go all right so now we should be able to run our code and no surprise as you, each time we run it it's going to choose from one of those channels because both channel it's ready to read from if you remember that select always distribute between the channels ready to read from so if I wrap this in a four, and maybe I do for i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus, and I know from this that though it's very unlikely, very, very unlikely, that though I would get to read all the values from one channel. So um, I really can do like 15 or 12 if I like, because um, between the two, I have, you know, how many values there? Six, I have 12 values. but Never mind. I I know I don't I don't I wouldn't exhaust any one channel, and so um, so I go run that and this is what I get right and you know you could see it distributed. Um, now what if I were to introduce a default case, right? I introduce a default case, F A U L T default. And I say F M T that print L N no more values or no value, something like that, all right? Now, let's see if my default case is gonna get called. So I run this, and no matter how many times I run this, I'm never ever going to execute that default case. And the reason why is because the select case is gonna look at the channels that I can read from and see that those channels are ready for reading, and so it would not, um, execute my default case. Remember what default means is if the other cases, I cannot perform the other cases, even if it's in this case of a select channel, or even when we were using it as control flow, when we did like if statement and for loop, when we look at the select as a sort of variation on the if else then, it's if you can do all the other cases, then you do the default, right? It doesn't matter where the default comes, if it comes at the beginning or the end, but we like putting it at the end because we want it to kind of read our intention, which is uh, you know, if these cases don't work, then default to these, right? And so here, if I put another value on here, and I call that 13, and so of course, I have six here, seven here, six here, so that's 13, but let's see what's going to happen now, right? Again, if my channel, since it can read from my channel, it's going to do just that. It's going to try and read from the channel. It's only if it can read from the channel, then it's going to do my default. So when I have put 14 iteration, it would exhaust these two channels. And then in that event, it can read from odd, it can read from even, and then it's going to um, finally say, oh, let me um, take from the default. And so you're going to expect that my default is always going to come at the end because um, it can always read from those other channels. Now you might think, well, rather that's boring. Why would I want a default? Well, maybe you have a number of things that can time out, right? That in this case, these are channels that always add values, but maybe there were things that are tied to functions that might take a time, some time or something like that. And um, because of that, let's say this represents reading from a channel where I didn't have a value already, but there was some function that's running to push values on here. And when it gets here and tries to read an odd number, there wasn't none because that function that was computing some very large odd number didn't complete. And then it would try to read an even number. And that function that's computing even numbers and pushing it on my channel wasn't ready. Then it would come here and say, hey, you know what? I couldn't get a value. And of course, it would loop around. And hopefully, they would have some value then. Okay? So again, default is functioning the exact same way in the case of channel selection as it would in 
when you're not using channel. And that is to say that so long as I can read from these other cases, only then I perform my defaults. But if I can, then thing. Um, to kind of drive that point home a little bit more, just let's say C is equals to equals the time that after, and I'm going to do one times um, time that nanosecond. Okay, so I'm saying after one nanosecond, I want you to um, send a value on this channel. Okay, after one nanosecond. And so you can imagine what it's going to do. It's going to come here and try to read a value from C. And if there's no value, then it's going to do the default. But if there's a value on C, well, then it's just going to read that value. And so let's see what's going to happen. And... Uh, Wait a second, what's going on? Um, C is equals to time that, that, that after. Uh, what are you complaining about? Syntax error, expected equal. Colon equal, yes, that's what I have. Time that after one times time that nanosecond. C, okay. Let me, what am I missing? Var C, oh, mm, I don't need, if I use var, I don't use colon equal. <laughs> so use one or the other, not both. All right. And so there you go, right? You can see that you know, I'm looping around, and um, at the time I'm looping around, um, I don't have any um, thing for my channel. And so um, in order for me to have a value that come back in that time, my 14 expression here are going around and occurring and my function, this is completing before the one nanosecond time is up, okay? And so if I, <laughs> what can I do to cause it to um, read that value? So the time would have to be less. It would have to expire before. So um, let's say I did uh, maybe 140. But we wouldn't even see. Um, and so once it's here, it breaks out, let's say. Break, so it doesn't continue. And so I would know that how it went in there. Um, so even then, um, it's not enough to cause my time, my one nanosecond time, to, to be fired. Okay? So essentially, I'm trying to say, create a time, then come here, try and read from that time. If I can read it, then come here, else go here. And still, with, even with all this, um, looping around, I still don't get to test. Oh, let me see. Oh, no, there's something wrong here now, because by now, it should have executed one nanosecond. So um, maybe I'm doing something else that's really funny. But just keep in mind, basically, that it's... The idea is if I cannot read from that channel, then I'll go do the default, right? And that remains true. Um, something is, I didn't th think of something with my example here, but I was trying to perform a number of operation given this, uh, causing this time to expire, but that's not happening. Um, so anyway, all right, so that's, the only, so that's the only thing is select do work with channels. If your channels cannot um, are blocked for some reason, you can't read from them, you can't send on them, it's going to fall true to the default. And we looked at when a channel is closed, how to test if it's closed when you read a value. So you know if you're reading the default value or not. And so that's it for this um, review and close out. Um, with next video, we're going to be in Chapter 8 talking about Go routines. All right, post question and comments. And... If we have to review or go back on anything, we'll do that. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks for your time. Bye.